All right, guys. So you need to take out your 1.1 E exponential functions from data from two data points, part B. On um, our last class meeting, we did it by hand. Is that correct? I hope so. I hope that's accurate. I can't really remember. But um, I feel like we did this by hand. We found our A, our B, and all that thing. That good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do now is quickly go over how to do it by calculator, okay? And then we're going to do the next problem, calculator, and by hand to show you how they are related. Got it? All right. So we're going to go through the steps for calculator. So the steps for calculator go as follows. Step one, you're still going to write out your ordered pairs. Okay, so we're going to read this story. Each of Magna's cats has fleas. Her veterinarian recommended a treatment plan that includes combing out her cat's fur every day. Magna kept track of the number of fleas that she removed from her cats while combing them out. One on day zero, the day she started the treatment, she removed a total of 87 fleas. On day six, she removed a total of 14 fleas. If Magna keeps up the treatment and the number of fleas can be modeled by an exponential function, approximate the number of fleas she should expect to remove from the cats on day 14, right? The exponential function. We don't know why Megna has those special glasses so she could see these fleas and is counting them, but we're just going to let her be great and we're going to calculate, all right? Um, so make sure you're in a position where you can learn and you're paying attention because that's the only way you're going to know how to do something is if you try and pay attention. All right, so our first order pair is from day zero. Day zero, she collected how many fleas? 87 fleas, okay? Our next ordered pair comes from day six. Day six, she collected 14 fleas, okay? Remember, time is our independent variable. That is why our um, X values are zero and six, okay? Step two is we're gonna input into the calculate. So we're going to, in the calculator, we're gonna go to stat. These should sound very familiar by now. Then we're gonna press one for edit. Oh, we're gonna put one. Yeah. Oh. It's been good news. I thought you were talking about the data. And then you're going to input your values, right? It would be zero, right? Okay. After we do that, then we're gonna to go to stat. And from stat, you're gonna to go to calc. And from calc, this time we're going to zero for exponential regression. And then calculate. Ooh. Okay, so these are the steps that you're following. Here. All right, so I'm gonna pull up my calculator that my new one that I hopefully is my friend. Hey, look, I upgraded guys, I upgraded. I upgraded. It looks, old. Silver it, looks old. it looks older than the other one. Yeah. Yeah. It looks older than the other one. This is the old, this is the original. This is the Godfather. I like the early 2000s. All right, here we go. So stat, edit. I'm going to put in my values, zero, six, and then I'm going to put in... 87 and 14, 87 and 14, yeah? Okay, so we went stat, one for edit, we input. Now we're gonna go to stat, arrow over to calc, and then to zero. So I'm gonna go back to stat, calc, and then I'm just gonna show you that the reason why I press zero is because it says, Zero for e exponential, exponential regression. regression. Do we see it? Yeah. So we press zero. And now look, now I have to do like y'all. I have to scroll down and press calculate. Which is why I updated my calculator so that we can have more mini steps. That's insane. All right. So we found our, so step three is to write your equation. What's our equation? Okay, so it's in the format of y equals a times b to the x, right? 
So that leads us to y equals, say it again, 87, 87. times 0.737 or 74. 73 what? 7. To the x. We want to try to stick to at least three decimal places just for accuracy. The more decimal places you have, the more accurate you are. And I think that that's what College Board asked for is three decimal places. So I'm going to try to practice that with you guys. Three decimal so we places. Get used to it. So we get used to it. All right. Can we answer the problem now? So the yes. question said, on day 14, what are we looking like? Yes. On day 14, what are we looking like? So we're going to substitute in 14 for X. Agree? Yes. Yes, if I input it in there. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, either way. Yeah. So either way, I can type in this equation or I can substitute in or if it's only one value, I just typically substitute in. If it's multiple values, then I will put it in and solve it from the table. But I'm just substituting in 14 for X. And when I substitute 14 for X, let me go to my new handy dandy calculadora. You. So we have 87 times 0.737 to the, and look, now I got a little one too, 14. And we get, so we're going to put uh, approximately, how many fleas will they have? Can you have one. one. Just one flea. The leg of another one. <laughs> so approximately how many fleas should she have left? One. One. Well, I put like the little so, squiggly line. For... Yes, you could put a pro the squiggly line for approximate. Yeah. All right. How do we fill about calculator? One. Do we see those steps? By now, we feel should start feeling like oh, that is not that terrible, right? Okay. No. All right. So what's going to happen on the peer do here? Um. I'm going to pause and I want you to solve this using the calculator, okay? Then we're gonna solve it um, by hand together, got it? So I want you to practice with your table. I'll be walking around if you need me, but I want you to solve it first.
All right, guys, let's check back in. So I'm going to go through it with the calculator, and then I'm going to go through it by hand to show you how you can be a calculator, too. All right. So here we go. So by hand, step one says I'm going to get my calculator, right? Step two says on the calculator, we're going to go to stat. We go to edit. Oh, no, I didn't clear, but there's stuff already in there. It's okay. I'm going to put it in. What were our ordered pairs that you came up with? Two and seven. And then five, 11, right? Are we good? Okay, so we input. After we input, we then do what? And zero for exponential regression. Okay, and then we go all the way down to calculate. And we hit enter, and we get, how do we do? Good. Good? Okay, so then after you did that, how did you figure out the question? It said 20 days later. So we're substituting in 20 for what variable? The X. So I'm going to type in 5. I forgot that quickly what it was. 5.17 what? 9. Oh. Times? 1.16. 1.16. 6.3 to the 20th power. 20th power. And we hit enter and we get. Okay. So approximately how many people would have heard the rumor? 106. 106 people. Does that make sense? Okay. I got 104. So that's what. Um, did you put in three decimal places? Yes. Like I did, I did the, I stored the like, You stored, yes. That's going to give you the most accurate. Yeah. But that's why we practice with the three rounding um, because I'm pretty sure that they round on three. Okay. And so that's why. So they round on three? Yes. Okay, because I didn't do that. Okay. If you remember, if you struggle with rounding, you can always go to mode and take it from float to what you needed to round to. And it will round for you from there on. So like if I did stat calc, press zero, went down to calculate, it would round it for me as well. So if you struggle with rounding, you can use the mode feature and switch from float to three, and then you know that you'll be rounding correctly. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. All right, so now we're gonna do it by hand. All right, because what if you don't have a graphing calculator at home? Oh no, I quit, right? No. Okay, if you don't have a graphing calculator in hand, these are the steps that you would follow. So step one is still your ordered pairs. Okay, so you still find the ordered pairs and our ordered pairs were what? Two, seven and five and 11, okay? Step two, you're gonna calculate your B value, okay? And so to calculate, your B value, there's a formula, okay? The formula is B equals Y2 divided by Y1 to the one divided by X2 minus X1. That is how you calculate your B value with two points. Okay? So your Y2 and Y1 come from here. You have your X1, Y1, your X2, Y2. Do you not? Yeah. So you're just plugging things in. So B equals 11 divided by seven, Y2 over Y1 to the one divided by five minus two. And that's what you would plug into a standard calculator. You would do the math for that. So let me just go to my calculator. So in the calculator, I would put in 11 divided by seven 
carry. And what's five minus two? Three. Three. I wasn't really hoping for a whole clap <laughs> crowd thing there, guys. And when I hit enter, what do I get? Did I get the same answer we got when we did it with the calculator? Yeah. I did. So my B value is 1.163. Did we already know that? Yes, because we did with the calculator. But I wanted to show you that you could be a calculator too, okay? So then on step three, we have to calculate our A value. Now, our A value is normally our zero, but do we have a zero in this problem? No. No, we do not. So to calculate your A value, you're going to plug into Y equals A. You're going to plug your Y1 equals A times your B to your X1. So we plug in what we do know. Do we have a Y1? Yeah. Do we have an X1? Yeah. Do we know our B value? Yes, so we're going to plug those in. So when we plug in, our Y1 is 7. Our A is what we're looking for. What is our B value? 1.163. And what is our X1? To the 2. Right? Okay. If this is multiplication, what is the opposite of multiplication? Division. So if I want to move this so like a is by itself i have to divide by 1.163 to the 2 and that's how this gets rid of and i plug in the calculator to get my a value so i'm going to go to my calculator the only thing about the new calculator is it won't stay on the screen it keeps going away all right so to input this i'm gonna have I still can't make a fraction, so I have to use parentheses to protect mine. One and 163 thousandths squared. So I divide and I get, oh my gosh, our A value. Oh, that's insane. One point. Isn't that crazy? And then the last step is just to write your equation. Okay, and our equation is y equals 5 and 175 thousandths times 1 and 163 thousandths to the x. Is that not what we got using regression model? Look at you being a regression model. Hmm? Phone away, please. Okay, what... What are your questions about calculating my hand? I always feel empowered and like I'm a little genius Wait, what when I can do something by hand. So what are we, doing by hand? we just did it by hand. No, no. Oh, no, no. I'm I'm yes. We manually solve for B and A instead of letting the like calculate you're, calculate. You're We're, no. It's called brain power. All right. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Smarter. All right. So your challenge. Um. Your challenge is you're going to do the student do here without the calculator, okay? Um, without without using regression, you're going to do the calculating yourself, okay? We're going to set it up together, and then I'm going to let you go, okay? So it, it it's not, okay? I want you to try it and practice it and see that those four steps are not terrible, okay? Well, we're so, doing the, the A, B. Yes. Oh, that's hard. Yes, that's why we're going to set it up together. Good job, Lydia. Um, not right now. I was supposed to say you had to come during tutorials or something. Uh, in 1979, the richest 1% of people in the U.S. owned 23% of the nation's wealth. By 2019, the richest 1% people in the U.S. owned nearly 35% of the nation's wealth. Determine an exponential function model for the scenario and use it to estimate the percent of the nation's wealth that the richest 1% people in the U.S. own, okay? So step one is to come up with our ordered pair. What are our ordered pairs? 
And how do I write 23% as a non percent? 0.23. And then my other one is? Okay. When we did our Bronco um, activity, we said with exponentials, can you put the year in? No. no, the numbers get entirely too large, too fast, right? So instead of that, we set the initial one as our zero, and then we go from there. So 1979 is our zero, and 2019 is how many years later? 40. Okay, so that's our table. So what you're going to do is find your B. And remember, B equals Y2 divided by Y1 to the one divided by X2 minus X1. It is not. It is division and subtraction. Y minus one over, that's Y2, right? Yes. Remember, Y equals A times B to the X. All right, so um, calculate your B. Practice it. Practice makes you better. All right, guys, let's see how we did. So on here, to find our approximate B value, you should have had your Y2, so 0.35 divided by 0.23 to the one divided by 40 minus zero. Then you plug that into the calculator. It's X2 minus X1. Oh, it doesn't matter because it's zero, but if it was an other number, then it would make a difference. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to put it in. I have 3,500. 
divided by 23 hundredths. Carry to the one divided by 40. And I hit enter, and what did we get? So approximately 1.011. Okay, that's your B. So then your A in this problem, it's your initial value. And I have an initial value, right? So what's my initial value? 0.23. So A equals 0.23. So therefore, step four, your equation. What is your equation? Uh, y equals 23 hundredths times one and 11 thousandths to the X. Was it terrible? Okay. So now can you answer the problem in the question? And the problem is they want to know what was it in 1995? So 1995 is how far from 1979? 1995 minus 1979 is 16. So this is what we're going to let x equal, right? So when we let x equal 16, we get 23 hundredths times 1 and 11 thousandths to the 16th. What'd you get? I'm waiting. Okay. So we get 0 0.274, and what is that as a percentage? 27.4%. So to answer the final question, so the growth factor in this situation meant that that's the rate that we're growing, right? So every year, our um, one percenters are gaining one percent of our population, right? Or income. Oh. All right, so your challenge, um, I'd like for you to do this one on your own, whether it's by hand or by calculator. You are going home, so you have to do it by hand.